It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. And welcome to a cup of coffee with Will and Chris. You can see Will is not here this week. Well, He's leading the life of Riley here. He's, you know, taking it easy, his million dollars and, you know, just taking it easy. Kind so, of like we, you do most of We the are time. docking his pay. I just want to make sure of that. He'd have to dock I'm, his own I'm not pay. getting paid to do this. So <laughs> we are definitely docking That's his right. pay. If you don't recognize yeah. who this is, it is the great Mike Clayton, former superstar on the radio, right? Morning show, now with Wonderland Camp. I, I like to call him Mr. Wonderland, right? I'm sure your wife calls Mr. you that too. Mr. Wonderful is what she calls okay. me, actually. Okay. Well, that, that would explain After 30 it. years of marriage, she calls me Mr. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mike will be with us this week, and we've got a lot to talk about. I'm really looking forward to the LOZ rumor mill this week. Okay. So we're going to talk about the rumors of what rich and famous people live here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, right? interesting. Ooh, that I know, be I've fun. heard some rumors. Okay, I can't but wait I've to hear those. I've also debunked some rumors. Okay, so we'll get all of that. Uh, we'll also talk about the latest with the Outlet Mall. What's okay. going on with that? Uh, maybe we know, maybe we don't know, and so much more. Did you know there's more year-round residents here? We'll tell you why we know okay. that. A lot of extra bridge traffic since the toll went away, all that, and so much more. But before we get to that, we got to hear about what's going on right here at uh, Slumberland Furniture, Slumberland at the Lake. Hey, everybody. It's Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We're in the middle of our fall home sale. And what's that mean for you? Great discounts for every room of your house. We've got up to 50% off of list pricing. And we're going to give you interest-free financing for up to 24 months if you choose. Don't forget, we deliver the entire lake area. Come check us out, Slumberland Furniture, where we're bringing happy home. Love Daryl, love all the people here at Slumberland Furniture. I just saw Daryl in the bathroom. Oh, I don't want to know. No, I we, do not want to know. Just, it's always strange to strike up a conversation when you're in the bathroom. Yes, it too. is. It feels sort of uncomfortable, but uh, okay. he carried himself well. That's good. Yeah, uh, great, yeah. great staff here. I'm sweating for some reason. I don't <laughs> know why. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so coming up here in a couple of minutes, uh, we're going to be joined by Lynn Farrell, of uh, John Farrell Real Estate. You know, they, they put on the country music jamboree. I know, Wonderland Camp is one of the benefactors. That's of right, that too. yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll talk with Lynn, she'll tell us who they've got on the jamboree this yep. year and uh, all that good stuff, so don't, don't miss okay. that. But as, as you mentioned, uh, part of the proceeds from the, mm -hmm. the jamboree goes to Wonderland Camp. Mm -hmm. You guys are always so busy out in the community uh, making your presence known, and, and a lot of that has to do with you. Well, thank you, and and you're you're right. You have to be relevant. You you have to uh, fight is the wrong word, but you're competing for charity dollars. Our operation is a big operation. There's no other nonprofit like ours uh, at uh, the lake, or maybe in central Missouri. It's a massive complex mm -hmm. with a big budget. We serve. Uh, this year we're on track to serve 1,700 people with disabilities. So there's always something to talk about. There's always something to promote. Um, and we just have to put our heads down and, and plow forward yeah. because we're doing it for uh, those people. Great, our, our yeah. Campers with disabilities. Such a great organization. And I've already got my tickets to your annual dinner. Party right? with a purpose. Yeah. yeah. Gala, uh, November 9th, Margaritaville. Can I, this is where I put the plug in. Absolutely. Margaritaville Lake Resort, uh, 6 to 11 p.m. Uh, tickets are on sale. Uh, sponsorships are still available, all different levels. Uh, Chris bought uh, couples tickets. Uh, Lake TV is donating some wonderful auction items. Mm -hmm. I think I heard some Kansas City Chiefs tickets mm -hmm. uh, will be donated by Lake TV. I'm putting Will Holtz on the spot. <laughs> but uh, if you need more information, you can call Wonderland Camp at 392-1000, area code 573, mm -hmm. or wonderlandcamp.org. Um, and you can also go to our Facebook page or website, or just just get a hold of me. Yeah, I mean, you see him yeah. everywhere. We'll get you tickets. In the community. Them. Last time I saw you, it's like, bring your wife with you once in a while, would you? I miss seeing yeah. her. She did all those things early on in my broadcast career. Uh, she did everything. You wore Went her everywhere, out. Yeah. And now she passes on a lot yeah. of stuff, which hey. I don't I don't blame no, her. I don't blame her either. Okay, so let's get into some local headlines here. Um, the toll bridge went away four months ago. Really? I hadn't heard. No, wait. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. 
So it's been four months since yeah. they took the tolls off the bridge, and they've they've been keeping track. Local business owners, by the way, are saying uh, that they are already seeing significant changes especially in real estate right. over in that area, which is interesting. So traffic across the bridge has increased 40 to 50 percent wow. over the same time last year, just since they took the toll away. I still cannot get used to it. Yeah. I mean, I've still driven through there and I just throw three dollars <laughs> right. out into the... I mean, nobody's there to get it, I would assume. But if you if you look, there's probably my three dollars. Uh, probably I've been there behind him to yeah, pick it up. Right. So I'm, I'm like, I'll get the guy behind me. That's okay. our vacation money there. So uh, the traffic peaked at over eleven thousand vehicles in one day on a Friday, right? Eleven thousand vehicles. That's incredible. Over that bridge back there. But you know, and, and the story here in uh, Lake Expo said the the toll bridge opened up development at what is now known as the Villages and Portachima right. over there. And I hadn't thought about that, that those neighborhoods wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the toll bridge. Yeah, a hundred percent true. Yeah. Because there was no easy way to get there. Yeah. I mean, who wants to swim across the lake <laughs> every time you had to get to your property yeah. over there? No it would just be too to far drive. to go all That's the right. way around. Yeah. So, so those communities were formed. You know. And what they're saying now is because the toll has gone away, there's even more of a real estate boom over in that area, okay. which makes sense. But it's pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. but the traffic is up. If you're taking the MMTT roads, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be more traffic. Yep, true. And piggybacking on that story, are there more year-round residents here in the lake area? Probably no doubt about that. Yeah. If you look at the real estate numbers, you look at the electrical usage in the area has gone up, I've heard. Yeah. Um, so uh, combined businesses, are, we're seeing an uptick and everything, or we've seen an uptick for yeah. the past several years. So a very specific number given to Lake Expo by Ameren okay. confirms okay. exactly what you just said. Okay, so get a load of these numbers. Ameren reported the following year over year increase in wintertime electrical use. So this isn't during the summer, this is wintertime. This is how they know there are more year round year. people here. So in 2020, the COVID year, electrical use was up 14%. That's which, significant. Which is big, right? But the next year, 2021, it was up 23% from the year before. So it went up 14% one year, 23% the next year. That's amazing. 37% in two years. And the year after that, it increased in 2022, 33% over the year before. So we're talking over 50% in just three years. That's incredible. So they're saying, uh, and it's not due to weather because they say the weather's been, you know, fairly normal, mm -hmm. fair, you know. So it's not that, that the weather's been so abnormally Yeah, that everybody's, cold, you know, raising more. their their heat or whatever. Yeah. 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 Speaking so, of which, if you come to my house this winter, 68 degrees, that's all we get. Yeah, I mean, that's that it. it. I mean, my family, we are accustomed to that now. It's been like that over the years. I'm like the thermometer police. You're you know, it, I'm, huh? I'm the thermostat police when I walk around. I'm like, all oh. right, who, t who touched the thermostat? So bring your blanket if you're coming over bring to uh, you're coming uh, Mike's over to house. Clayton's Casa. You know, uh, we keep it at like 72 during the day and it yeah, gets down to 68 I mean, you know, at night. Older people, yeah. you know, they yeah. get chilly. And exactly. Stuff. That's Exactly it, man. But we're sitting on the couch in our blanket, too. Right. Uh, by the way, just last week, you might have seen, speaking of electrical use, the utility company recently made that massive upgrade uh, because they say that new Oasis, Oasis at Lakeport is going to... That theme park alone is going to use more electricity than the whole city of Osage Beach. That's incredible. Holy cow. That's unbelievable. That is. But, you know, that's why Ameren is smiling because, you know, there are a yeah. lot of electrical use. Right. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to pay that bill. Oasis at Lakeport. Totally. Yeah. They, yeah. That is going to be a massive the, complex. It the roller like coaster is going to be apparently the big energy oh. center. I would have never thought about yeah. that. I thought it was going to be like the popcorn machine or something. Yeah, like well, the cotton candy. again, if you want that, it's over yeah, at Mike's over house, at Mike's right? House, Bring yeah. your blanket. Right. Okay, coming up, uh, we're going to sit down with Lynn Farrell and talk about the country music jamboree. But uh, right after that, more headlines for you, including a real danger uh, with Halloween candy that uh, the state of Missouri is talking about. Oh, boy. And we're also going to talk about, does the lake have an election integrity problem? Uh, the commissioners recently got together to talk about that. Okay. So we'll get to all of that. But right now, let's check in on the country music jamboree. 
Well, we're into the first couple of weeks of fall, which means the country music jamboree is back on its way. We've got the beautiful Miss Lynn Farrell with us here to talk about it today of John Farrell Real Estate. How's Lynn? Lynn's great, excited, busy. busy. Lots of things going on, business and the jamboree. Absolutely, she's been on her phone since she got <laughs> here doing real estate stuff. So uh, your 12th annual country music jamboree is coming up. Is it hard to believe it's been 12 years? It, I don't know where it's gone. Yeah. It, I mean, it just, you wake up and you're in a whole nother year. I know. And it just, it's actually a little scary. <laughs> I'm scared what's going to happen down the road. So I want to slow down just a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Is there a way to slow that clock down? <laughs> so when and where is the, is your country music jamboree? It is Sunday, October 13th. It's at the Lodge of the Four Seasons in the Campana Hall once again mm -hmm. for the 12th time. And everybody is excited about it. Yeah, every, every year everybody gets excited mm -hmm. about it. And uh, you always put together a great list of entertainers. My husband does that. Oh, he John's the John, one behind John's that. John's the boss. We just do what we're told. So. <laughs> okay, and he told you to come be on uh, Lake TV today. He so. said it was my turn. There you go. Yeah. Well, I was glad of it because we get the beauty, not the beast. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So who are your entertainers coming this year? Well, this year we're really excited. We've got Tony Booth back. Okay. He was here close to the first part of us doing this, and he just went over well. He's from uh, Texas. We're going to see him in November. We're going to take a cruise with him. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Ron and Leona Williams, which are from this area. Everybody loves Leona, and she pulls a crowd that's unbelievable. They don't really like Ron, but Leona's well, the big one, it right? depends on if you're younger or older. Okay, uh, cool. Ron, Ron's got quite a following as well. Really? Okay. So, then, of course, we got Bill Goofer Atterbury again. He is, he is just, I don't know how he does what he does and comes up with stuff he does. But there's times he's got people practically rolling out of their chairs really? laughing. Oh, he is so good. Uh, Dennis Stromat from uh, Illinois. He's a fiddle player and a great singer. Then our daughter, Alicia Farrell Lang. Mm -hmm. She has been with us every year on it. Wow. We're really excited about it. She does a great job and she does a lot of the harmony with all of the singers. Right. So she does her thing and then she harmonizes with all the rest. She kind of helps keep everybody in line. Wow. Larry Hurst from Raymore, uh, Kansas City. He is he has got a Marty Robbins voice. Really? And he is so good. We're just so excited. Then we've got Helen Russell from here. Yeah. She was on the Ozark Opry for several years and then when was still on it when they closed. She and her husband are doing their own thing now. Uh, they travel around and stuff. So she's actually com com uh, given us a show to uh, do on the silent auction oh, yeah. for somebody to buy. Okay. That will be great. And then Marty Schoenthaler, he is unbelievable. Really? He does a singer. Then of course the band is John Farrell, my own John Farrell bass player. Jim Finney, he and John have worked on this every year. Alicia again is part of the musicians. Daryl Cummings from uh, Illinois is playing lead guitar. Uh, Mark Fitch is from Illinois, a tremendous drummer. Mike McGee is down from around uh, Joplin, Missouri, yeah. and he is an unbelievable steel guitar player. Wow. He comes up every month and plays with us. My brother-in-law, Rick Newman, is going to play some fiddle, and he's going to do the auction at halftime for us. And we got a really neat item for the auction. Okay. What is that? So you do a silent auction, and you do a live auction. Correct. Right? To help Correct. raise money for right. charities. Yes. Yes. So we got a... a uh, a trip to uh, South Carolina yeah. this year. Uh, I'm looking here. It's down around Myrtle Beach. Ooh, that'd be nice. And it's a three-bedroom, three-bath, on the waterfront. Wow. Been remodeled. It is gorgeous. Garden City, South Carolina. Yeah, Garden City. So okay. It's just, and it was uh, donated to us by... Uh, where's my friend here? Uh, Scott Martin and his wife, Sherry Martin. Okay, Scotty. Yeah, Absolutely. he has contributed to us, so we're really, really excited about it. Okay, so, and you raise money to help charities. Quickly tell us who these charities are. Well, I don't know if you call them charities, but they're organizations like okay. State Fair Community College. Okay. I'm on the foundation board, have been for almost 12 years, yeah. maybe longer, and we raise money for scholarships for the local students here at the Lake of the Ozarks. I didn't get to go to college. I never had that opportunity. So this way we can help other students that don't maybe necessarily have the cash to, to achieve their goal. Yeah. 
Then we give it to LOSA, Lake of the Ozark Soccer Association. It's a soccer league down in the bottom in Lynn Creek. Uh, our son, Justin Farrell, and he has a board that runs that. Uh, I coached Justin and Jonas when they were growing up in that same area. Yeah. That was beginning to fold. That Somebody talked him into taking it over, and we've been giving money for probably the last four or five years to them to help take care of the grounds, improvement, and help those kids that want to play soccer that aren't financially capable. Oh, that's cool. And also Wonderland Camp, right? Wonderland Camp, we have a special needs um, in our family. And it's just, it's so rewarding to go out and see all those people. John and I make cotton candy out there for what they call the carnival. Yeah. And I've told those individuals, I'm glad I'm not here when you put them to bed as much cotton candy as they've eaten. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. A little bit of sugar rush yeah. happening there. Okay, if folks want more information on the 12th annual, uh, annual Country Music Jamboree, where do they get that information? Well, they can call me okay. or email me, Lynn at 573-216-2182. Uh, um, or our website is gcmatherealthing.com. Okay. That'll give you all the information. You can go on and buy tickets right there. Okay. And you can call me or you can call our office, 573-348-2181. And we've got the tickets there. You can come in. We've got people set up ready to sell. Perfect. And there you they're go. going pretty well right now. Going pretty hot. So mm -hmm. get, get your hands on those. Right. Lynn, as always, thank you for coming by. Appreciate it. Good luck with the Jamboree. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hope you can come. Don't you just love those Farrells? I mean, to tell you, Lynn oh. and John Farrell, they're great. The best. And speaking of cotton candy, last time, and she, she told the story, yeah. um, that she ran the cotton candy machine on our carnival on Sunday. Yeah. They'd come out and volunteer at Wonderland Camp. Isn't that great? So they're, yeah. They're That's just, just so they're amazing. They're just fun people. They have raised. I bought my table. Have you? Genuine That's country right, music. you have. Yeah, I got yeah. a table at 10. And yeah. she told me she was getting me a couple of tickets. Good too, for you. So, yeah. Good. yeah, we'll see you there. So they have raised with that country music jamboree over the last 12 years, $289,000. Yep, it's true. That's greatness. Okay. So back to the local stories. We've got Halloween coming up. Yep. Uh, I've heard of it. Did you ever win a Halloween contest for dressing up? Never won a Halloween contest, but my neighborhood is quite famous for Halloween. Oh, yeah? I live in a certain area of Eldon where we have between six and 900 trick-or-treaters come to our house every year. Wow. I think 500 was the lowest we've ever wow. had. We were told about that when we bought the home 25 some years ago. And you ha I literally, so right now I'm fundraising. If you'd like to donate to my candy uh, charity, please send $5 to my Venmo account. So I yeah, can, like, right, right, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so the real story is, there is a danger out there. The headline is candy or cannabis, mm. okay? And it says, Missouri goes after weed products marketed to kids. How insane is that? Somebody is out there marketing cannabis to kids. Well, and there, I believe there was a recent law passed about that, about the packaging and how it's yeah. presented, et cetera, in the state of Missouri. It's a real danger. I think the reputable cannabis uh, retailers are not the ones you have to worry about. Right. But it's those people that are making it look like candy, you know, yeah. Yeah. to a degree to where it can't be resisted. How dangerous is that? So, so far, the DHSS has found nearly 9,000 unregulated products in 39 out of the 64 facilities they've inspected since September 1st. Well, that is crazy. Yeah out of control, so products resembling popular candy like Skittles and gummies mm -hmm. are among those confiscated. I get it too. And what did we worry about when we were kids? There was that rumor that yeah. uh, we, there were razor blades and apples that yeah. were just rumors, but this this is a reality. Yeah, it is. So parents, be on the lookout for that. Um, you know, be careful. The, the, the state of Missouri is cracking down on that, trying to take care of that. It's sad that we have to deal with that, but... Uh, there you go. Parents be on the lookout for, for stuff like that. Uh, the elections are coming up. What are we, about six weeks away from the big primary elections, presidential elections, um, govern, uh, the governor and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, Camden County commissioners a couple of weeks ago got together to discuss local election integrity. Okay. okay. Uh, and the, Dr. Douglas Frank, a physicist and mathematician, presented his findings on voter, voter roll inconsistencies, and he proposed some re reforms. So 
in Camden County specifically, Little Camden County, mm -hmm. which you would think, okay, we got you know pretty good grip on this. Right, no problem. At all. Yeah, right. Apparently, that's not necessarily the case. Um, so this guy, this Dr. Douglas Frank, he's been doing this since 2020. Started in 2020. People calling him into different counties to say, mm -hmm. what happened? What mm -hmm. is going on? And Dr. Frank said, what I saw in 2020, I could not unsee. Uh, which wasn't good, basically. How scary is this? I mean, our our basic freedoms, our country is based on free elections. And man, it, it, the, there is some trouble with what is going on with voter in, integrity around the country, even apparently maybe here in little Camden County. Well, it's something I think you always have to be vigilant about. Um, and there's always going to be some uh, irregularity. I think we've always had that. Yeah. Um, so it's just to a degree that we need to monitor. Now, will there be anything that Camden County needs to do before this election? Uh, doubtful. It might be out of time, it, basically. It, 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 it probably is. Yeah. And, and would you even want to make any drastic changes? We've already seen some states already do that. And that could confuse the process. Yeah. There could be some uh, legal action taking place. So See? Uh, a lot of the, or several of the, the county people that were there at this commissioner's mm -hmm. meeting uh, expressed concerns about the feasibility of handling local voter roll maintenance uh, due to their resources, mm -hmm. right? Which is, sure. you yeah. know. Always an issue. Yeah. And in Re resources, always an issue. In response, Dr. Frank suggested mobilizing local volunteers to assist, which you would think would be doable mm -hmm. in a county like this. Statewide trends. Uh, sharing that Missouri centralized voter registration database showed significant changes in Camden County voter rolls between 2021 and 2024, over 16,000 changes. So mm -hmm. don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because you want to clean those things up and keep up with them. Right. You know, so, but it is something to think about. And does it have something to do with more people now moving into the area? We have more people registering yeah. to the vote in this area too. So As we could, talked about. That could be a possibility. Yeah, more uh, all year round people right. living here yeah. and everything make like this that. Place their home. So uh, that is something to think about uh, with uh, the elections coming up. And uh, I know in 2020, there were a lot of issues. Hopefully we won't have those issues again this year, uh, but still a lot of questions about what happened in 2020 and in 2022 uh, with some of the voting things that went on. It was a little sketchy there. Hopefully we'll, we'll, this country will be able to take care of that. Okay, so the next thing, next local headline is the casino is back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Right, the, the trying to add another river casino to the Missouri Constitution. That'll be voted on in November around the state of Missouri. From everything I'm hearing, they're kind of expecting that to pass and that there would be an additional uh, casino. And this would be the one on the Osage River. River. Yeah, this that would not be the Indian casino. Different entity, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, you certainly, if you open up your browser, uh, and you do any social media searches, you certainly see a wide variety of um, opinions mm -hmm. on both sides about the casino, uh, this particular proposed casino. So um, I, it remains to be seen how people will vote on that. Yeah. And I think, uh, at least what I've seen, people may vote on it depending on whether or not it helps them individually. You often see that people vote for certain things that seem to help them, yeah. um, you know, uh, down the road, whether if they're in a business or not. So we'll see how people uh, decide to vote for that. You know, the thing uh, that interests me, I've almost, I, I'm, I'm at the point where, you know, they, they legalized weed, right, mm -hmm. in Missouri. So that's mm -hmm. a thing now. So I see things like this as just basically being voted in. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, how soon would they have a casino up? Right. You know, yeah. would that be like if construction has. start the next day? Uh, that'd be interesting. Where exactly would it go? Right, All that's another questions. good question. Yeah, we know that the, if the, the Native American casino, we sort of had an idea uh, if that moves through the Department of Interior, mm -hmm. if that moves through some of the state and local processes, uh, we sort of know where that would go. Where would this casino right. go? Where exactly? Would Somewhere. It go? How would you access on the Osage River? But that could right. be anywhere between uh, Sunrise Beach and Jeff City, I, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. So hope, hopefully, uh, we'll get that figured out. Soon, a lot of questions there. Yeah.
That's we should have put that in the LOZ rumor mill because really that's just a rumor at this point. Yeah. You know what else is just a rumor at this point? The outlet mall. And what's going on with that? Boy, remember the heyday of the outlet mall? I mean, when I moved here and you couldn't find a parking place. Yeah. You know, and it was the place to be. There were concerts out there. I was in radio at the time and we were always broadcasting live out there. And malls, you know, uh, some of them went by the wayside and yeah. and uh, now look at it. It's know, terrible it's over there, yeah. yeah. So uh, the rumor is that it is back under contract oh. and that something is happening there, but that's just a rumor because we cannot get any confirmation whatsoever yeah. on that. And would you put another mall there? Would you make it offices? Would you make it a family entertainment complex? What you know? Right. What would they do? What are you going to do with that? Well, they, right. And I'm guessing that's thing. one of the big questions. Right. So the outlet mall still just a rumor. Uh, here's a fun one though. Who are the rich and famous that have a place? at the Lake of the Ozarks. Besides the Schneiders? Uh, besides the Claytons the, um, and the uh, Will Holtzes and stuff. Holtzes. Okay, so I'm gonna throw out a couple of names. We, okay. We're pretty sure Mark Cuban has a home here, right? Okay. A big home uh, in the Lynn Creek uh, arm. Okay, right? I did not know that. Yeah, uh, Brad Pitt, I hear, has a huge gated complex here. Hmm. Uh, somewhere He's in originally didn't he go to school in Springfield he did. Yeah, or Kickapoo. whatever? And I think he's he a Kickapoo I believe kid. born in Missouri somewhere, West Plains or somewhere. We've seen Blake Sheldon and Gwen Stefani here. We've seen them. Here. I don't know if they have a place, a place here, here. Right. Um, and have you heard of any any others? I mean, Patrick Mahomes is the persistent yeah. rumor. Mm -hmm. um, I was at Shawnee Bluff uh, Winery in Lake Ozark weeks and weeks ago. We were doing a fundraiser there and... I had a guy saddle up to me and point right across from Shawnee Bluff. And he said, that's right by the bridge. That's Patrick Mahomes' house there. And I'm like, wow, that is, I mean, it's a spectacular house. Really? The house that they're building right across from Shawnee. And I said, do you really think Patrick Mahomes would build a house right there, that prominent, yeah. you know, for all the world to see? And first of all, he's got a home and he's got a football field and a golf course on it, <laughs> and a swimming pool. But he doesn't have a lake of the Ozarks. You don't see thing. any of that at this house. So hmm. I call BS All right. on the Patrick Mahomes. If we do find that house. it is, though, we can go, you know, pull in front of his house on the pond. Sure. Too, and, you know, start yeah. taking pictures. I'm sure he would appreciate like that. that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he would love that. And, right. and Brittany, too. So I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I hear... I don't, I think it's a realtor more, is your best way to find out these things. Yeah. Get in good with the realtors. We can't seem to confirm it though, or builders. But or, that's or one builders. of the things is we've had builders tell us, oh yes, he is building a home here, but we can't confirm that. So right. that just spreads the rumors. Yeah. Um, Papo's is coming to Camdenton, I guess. Good. Yeah. yeah. I was at the champagne campaign over the weekend mm -hmm. um, and they donate all the food for that event. And it was fabulous. Pizza, cookies, meatballs. Oh. So we're gonna have a Papo's in Camdenton. They have them now all around the Midwest yeah. and the state of Missouri. So good for him Absolutely. and them. Love uh, him them. and Melissa. Such good, uh, good people, good, good community food, people. Everything. Yep. I failed to mention during our election integrity story that absentee voting has started it's this it's week. underway. Right, for the general election. Mm -hmm. uh, this is absentee voting and um, Jamie, the deputy clerk, says that most people don't know you can actually come to the courthouse, to the county clerk's office, and vote in person. They think that absentee voting is sending them a ballot in the mail, and yes... Not necessarily true. That's right. Yeah. So uh, remember that. Uh, it is election period coming up. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Patrick Mahomes. We're down to our final few seconds. Okay. Uh, are they going to win the Super Bowl again this year? It's looking good. I mean, you know, when you when you want to know football facts and stats, uh, you come to me. Um, yeah, you're the expert. Nobody knows more about uh, foosball than I do. Right. So, okay. uh, most definitely. And that's what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, I got foosball. a good feeling. Yeah. I think it's a three-peat. Okay. Yeah. All right, coming up on the uh, Community Spotlight Show this week, we've got the activities director over at Versailles High School, Aaron Allen. Great. A lot of good Great. things happening there. Uh, we have got uh, high school football for you on Friday night, Warsaw and Versailles. So apparently awesome. it's Versailles week. You guys do a great job. Team. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you to Mike Clayton for filling in for Will. Will will be back next week on a cup of coffee.